Hi, I'm Daisy from Small Ceramics. And I'm Adam from Adam Ceramics. And today we're going to show you how to use a microwave kiln to do Raku firing. So what we're going to be using is all things that sit around the house. So microwave from the kitchen. This is a second-hand one. Don't use the one from your kitchen. So these microwave kilns are available from Amazon. They are glass kilns, but they can be used for ceramics as well. We both have links in our bios to where you can get these from. You can get large and small, and they're about £30. So really cheap, really good value. And inside the microwave here, I've removed the plate so that it's very easy to put the kiln inside. There's no wobbles, it's nice and stable. The things that you'll need do lie around the house. Um, the microwave is secondhand, but all of the other things I've kind of picked up at thrift stores as well. And this becomes our reduction chamber. So it's just a cooking pot that I've filled with sawdust. You can use anything for Reki. You can use banana skins. On throw down we used horse poo, but that smells disgusting. So I would say only use sawdust for the reduction. And then you'll need safety equipment. So tongs. So Sorry, they're tongs. good because you do loads of tiny, really small things. Yes, don't you? I do. So, so you'll want, tongs yeah. like this are really good for small pots. And the larger tongs you might want for actually picking up the kiln because this does get hot, it gets to a thousand degrees, scorchy, and you can use the larger tongs to pick up the kiln. And I get these from wood burning stove stores. So anything that you can use for a home fire, you can also use with your microwave kiln, which then brings me to gloves. So gloves. I'll give you a pair and then I have a pair. You can get them from loads of different places, but these are actually welders gloves. So just online and they're used for... Big thick gloves for picking up when it's hot as well. You can use them to open up the kiln as well. You don't want to burn your hands. Yeah. Um, and then as me and Daisy have in front of us, kiln shelves. Because we've got a wooden table, we don't want the hot kiln to burn the table. So we always put the kiln down on something that is going to absorb and insulate the surface. Fire extinguisher. There's never been a fire. I've never had any danger or any troubles, but I would always recommend having a fire extinguisher and a bucket of water to hand just, just in case. And then last but not least, ah. some eyewear to protect your eyes in case anything comes off, but always very important. Safety is first priority. So once you've got all your stuff on, you can get the kiln into the microwave for the first part, which I always say it needs a preheat. And then we've got one in here and we're just going to pop it on for three minutes on there and that should give it enough residual heat to make sure your pot's completely dry before anything goes in the microwave. Because the microwave heats by agitating water molecules so if there's any moisture in that pot it's going to explode. We don't yeah. want that do we? And then you're going to get cracks in your pot which I know is a problem for a lot of people who are trying microwave firing for the first time. They'll say, my pot was totally dry, but it cracked. Mm. Well, it probably wasn't dry and it probably got heated too quickly. Exactly. So today we're gonna to be using a Raku glaze from Spectrum. This is my favorite, it's ox blood and it comes out a beautiful bright red. But if you just did it in a normal firing, it wouldn't come out red. It's the actual, it's the Raku part that turns it red. Um, so when we put the hot pot into the sawdust, the sawdust will burst into flames. The flames will rip the oxygen out of the atmosphere and that lack of oxygen changes the chemical composition of the glaze, which would probably be a green glaze, I think, mm. in oxidisation. But in reduction, it will turn a beautiful red, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. OK, so we're going to paint these two pots with the Raku glaze and put them into our preheated kiln. What are you going to paint on yours? I'm just going to do a, an overall colour, a nice coat because I love how it comes out. What about you? I'm going to do some stripes, which is a bit of a deviation from what I would normally do, but I think it's quite good to show everyone that the places you don't paint will actually turn black. Mm. So, because these are white pots, um, so in an oxidising firing, the pot will stay white and the glaze will oxidise, but we're doing a reduction. So when the flames happen, lots of smoke happens as well. Mm. And that smoke gets trapped into the surface of the clay in a thing called carbon trapping. So it will turn the actual white body of the clay black. So hopefully this will be a red and black stripey pot. Okay, I think mine's done. So now the microwave is done, the heat from the kiln inside will be enough to dry your pot. Okay, right. so I'm going to put in my painted one on here. Perfect. And then 
If I hold it up, you can see it's quite dark where it's quite wet. Now it's dry. Yay. And so in it goes. And so how long are we going to leave that on for now then? So people always ask about timings and it's really until you get the glow. But because I'm quite used to firing things this size, I know that that will take probably five minutes. And this microwave is 800 watts. Usually an 800 watt microwave is a good bet to go with. Newer microwaves have a thing where they cut off if they get a little bit warm. So I would always go for an older microwave mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And out here in the garden, we're using the extension lead, which I think also affects the timings because I did it at my friend's house once and it was all quicker. So England, US, going to be slightly different. Everyone will have their own cascade of timings. It's just about trial and error, really, isn't it? Yeah. And I always say it's density. So a bit like jacket potatoes, the bigger the potato, the longer the time, yeah. the bigger the pot, yeah. the longer the, the time. longer it needs. Yeah. And remember to always do this outside because when we're doing this firing, uh, fumes are created, so you don't want to be in a, in a space that you can breathe it in, so always make sure you're doing it outside. Yeah. On a nice clear day like today. Especially because we're doing raku today, because you can do earthenware and stoneware yeah. in here where you'll just leave it to naturally cool. But because we're doing raku, this sawdust's going to be on fire in a minute, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. So we don't... some smoke and... Yeah. Don't want to be inside. Don't want to have a fire that. inside. No. No. No, Definitely no, no, no. not. <laughs> this is about to finish, and when we open it, we're looking for that orange glow on top. Then we know that it's got to temperature. So let's open it up. Oh, yes, and I can really see that glow in there. Ready for that glow? Ooh. Okay, so now it's in. And then we place this over the top, and that's going to starve it of oxygen and it's gonna cause the reaction of the glaze. Yeah, so inside there now, you can see the smoke spilling out from the edges. The smoke lets us know that there's a flame that's taken all of the oxygen out. Mm. And now the chemical reaction is gonna be taking the oxygen out of the glaze itself. So it's gonna go from, it was quite black, wasn't it? Black, mm -hmm. green, a really dark green to hopefully ox blood red. And so you think about three minutes is kind of the average time that should be left doing its thing. Yeah, well, three minutes. What I would usually do then is put the next pot in to dry it off and go into the kiln. Into the kiln and then into the microwave. And we're going to put that on again for another five minutes. Yeah. So we're going to lift this off now and I'm going to put it in the water and you'll see the colour. Uh, okay. If you saw then, the colour really came out as we dropped it in and as it cooled down. So now we have this beautiful red. And where I didn't put the glaze on, you'll see it's gone black and that's the effect of the reduction yeah. on the clay. So this one's ready because we can see the glow. So you can peek through the little window to see the glow sometimes as well. So out it comes. So I'm going to pop this down onto the sawdust. And it immediately burns. And I'm actually going to put some sawdust on the top because I did stripes. So I want that carbon trapping to really create a, a blackness on the pot. And usually what I'd do is I'd do this in a cooking pot because you can put this little tin on top mm. and then put the lid on and then fully, it's going to be a lot yeah, less smoke. Fully reduces. And what I would also recommend doing is, because this is hot, but it looks very similar to the one that isn't hot, so I'd always put the hot one back in the microwave. That's just good housekeeping, yep. so we know we're not going to burn anything down or I'm yep. not going to lean on it. So again, we're going to leave this for about three minutes to let it do its thing, to get it down to around 300 degrees, yep. what you said. And then it'll be ready to drop into the water. So it should be black and red, fingers crossed. So Ooh. we're gonna pop it in. Oh yeah, lovely. Look at that red. Yeah. That's come out so nicely. Yeah. Love it. And then they've got the black where I haven't painted and the red where I have painted. Yeah, really nice. Boop, boop. Well done. Thanks for having me, Adam. Anytime. It's been so much fun doing Raku. And if you guys have any questions about Raku firing in a microwave kiln, then just post them down below and we'll answer everything. Yeah. See ya.